Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. Do yourself a favor, hit that subscribe button. Also hit the bell so you're notified when I make new videos. You can also hit that thumbs up button and, I don't know, maybe share it if you want. I've had a couple people asking me about these battery boxes that I've been taking out portable. Some people have asked me to show a little bit uh, more in depth of what I've got. So I want to show you, uh, <laughs> I've named them Little Geek and Big Geek. Um, just want to kind of show you some of the features. These are, these are both uh, like solar battery generator things that uh, the, the, the kids are calling them. So uh, let's take a walk around. I'm not going to show you how to wire them up because it took all my brain compartments just to do that without filming it. So, but uh, we'll crack open the lid and you can see the mess of wires that I have and you can probably do a better job than I will <laughs> make it a lot cleaner. But uh, very awesome, very useful. If the power goes out, you got, you got power, you can charge your phones. I've got lights on this one, solar charge controllers in both of them, lithium iron phosphate batteries, power poles, USB, all kinds of stuff. So uh, really awesome. I love these things. I use them all the freaking time. So uh, without any further ado, let's take a look at what we got. So let's take a look at Little Geek first. And as you can see, yes, I have my call sign and yes, I named it Little Geek. Uh, let me know in the comments if you actually know what these references are from. I'd be curious because <laughs> I'm just a nerd. So both of these are using very much the same components on the outside. The only difference is the charge controller that I have in here and the battery versus uh, what we have in Big Geek. I want to show you first off, this meter is absolutely fantastic. I love it. It'll show you your voltage. It'll show you your capacity. When it's drawing current, this will uh, obviously show your current draw. If it's really small, like you can just turn these lights on or the switches on, and you can see we're drawing 22 milliamps. When we get over milliamps, it'll change to amps. And then we have our watts, our energy used, our running time, and then your resistance from the uh, external and the internal battery resistance there. Very, very awesome and very accurate meter. This is actually, I have two different brands of this and they're exactly the same. The actual model of this, this is not it. That's just, don't pay attention to that. If you want to search this on Amazon, and I'll leave links in the description for all this stuff, but this is a PZEM-015 DC uh, multimeter. It's got a shunt. I love it. It's awesome. I actually had this one in this box before uh, and before I built Big Geek. And I liked these meters so much, I bought another one. I think they're about 20, 25 bucks on Amazon. Uh, this one from Peace Fair, who is the maker of uh, the other shunt that I have, this one says Spartan Power, that this one is. The other one that's in Big Geek is by Peace Fair. It's all the same exact thing, exactly the same thing. They just make them and put their own name on it, so big deal. But Super, super accurate. I like these. It's got the battery meter. You can set this. Kind of a pain in the butt to set that. But uh, once you get it up and running, it's really awesome. So on Little Geek, inside here, I'll show you in a minute, there's a 10 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery and a charge controller. But on the outside, I've wired this. So this top left one where I've got the little sun, that's where I plug my solar panel into. And then that goes directly into the charge controller and it's tied in with the battery. These other three power poles are wired up. So when I flip that switch, now these are live. So I've got three different power poles that I can use. And then on this side, we've got, I really like this USB charger. I actually had a different one in here and I liked this one so much. I bought three of them now. I've got one in here, one in Big Geek. And I also have one in my G90 Go box. It's fantastic. This also has a very accurate watt meter on here. So it's showing 13.4. It's in increments of two, so it's on 13.4 right now. It's got a QC 3.0, just regular kind of standard USB there. And then it's got a USB-C down here. This thing charges my phone so incredibly fast. When I have uh, the USB-C cable in there on my iPhone, what do I have, a 12 Pro Max, whatever the heck it is and it could be like almost dead, you know, 20% or so, and it'll charge it up to like 75, 80% in about a half an hour. This thing just absolutely rocks. So I've, I've uh, switched over to all these. I used to have just like 2.1 amp uh, regular USBs 
in here and they're they're garbage so but it'll pull when you're reading it it'll pull like an uh, one and a half two amps so i mean it's just it's just filling your your phone uh with charge very very quickly very happy with these now let's take a look at what's under the hood warning it's a nightmare <laughs> but it works so on this side i've got crammed in here this is the actual solar charge controller i covered it with heat shrink but it looks like this it's just a little circuit board puts out all kinds of rf noise so if you're playing ham radio uh you definitely don't want to be charging with this thing on but it's just a little circuit board they're like 15 bucks i actually took the heat sink off of this one so i could put the heat shrink around there it doesn't really get that hot but um that's the charge controller they're kind of crappy but it works and then this is the 10 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery that I built out of Headway 38, uh, what are these, 38 120S cells, and then a 30 amp uh, BMS here. And what else do we have in here? I've got my iPhone cable with the USB-C so I can charge my phone real quick. And then a whole nightmarish mess of wires. Um, and then down there, I don't know if you can see, but there's an extra fuse there. So in case I blow something. And then here's a look at the shunt. So basically one half of the one side of this connects to the ground of the battery. And then the other side of this is where you connect the grounds to all your accessories. And then uh, these two wires connect up to they connect up to the battery meter. And this is basically a resistor. So from this wire to this wire, it measures the voltage drop. And that's how it tells you how much current you're drawing and everything. And uh, just drilled some holes through these little fins here, put some zip ties around just to keep the wires tidied up. And uh, that's Little Geek. And I just really love how uh, small and compact this is. I, I pretty much always have this with me in my car, just because you never know. It's a good thing to have with you. And you can turn the meter off too. Love that. Both of these boxes, I should mention that I purchased at Harbor Freight. Uh, this one for Little Geek, I think they're like six bucks. And I think this one might have been 10 or 15 bucks. And now let's take a look at Big Geek. So we've got a very similar idea with this one. In this instance, I chose to go with two separate power pole ports, just really for no reason other than I wanted to. Uh, I bought these, these like empty shells and then I put the power poles in them. I would not do that again. I bought these because they were like, I don't know, five or six bucks each. But you got to push this pin through to hold the power poles in, which I just happened to have. But it was an absolute nightmare. I actually had to drill the holes out a little bit more and cram them in there. It was a nightmare. So it's definitely worth the extra money to just buy these with the power poles already installed. But again, same idea, same exact meter. I love this so much. It's, I can't say enough good things about this meter. It really is fantastic. And then similar idea with uh, Little Geek, we've got our top power pole for our solar charge in. And then I decided to just have two separate switches for this one and then another switch for these guys. So these are off if there's nothing, obviously if they're not on. Um, should also mention both of the solar charge, uh, the solar inputs. There's no current coming out of here just because of the way the charge controller works. The, the voltage doesn't go backwards through it. So this isn't switched on Little Geek. Inside this one, I do have a separate switch for the charge controller because I have a, a different charge controller inside of it. And the only reason I put a switch on it is because the charge controller would stay powered on uh, if it's just connected to the battery. So I wanted a way to shut that off. And then over here, we've got the same USB uh, QC 3.0, stands for Quick Charge 3.0, the, the accurate battery meter. Um, which is just, I don't need this because I have another battery meter here, obviously, but eh, I thought it'd just look cool. And this will actually, when you're charging, it'll, it'll like blink. And I, you know, I suppose I could show you, it does this. So once it starts getting power to the device, so see how it's doing that, which I kind of thought was annoying at first, but now it's actually kind of nice because it lets you know that your device is charging versus just sitting there, you know, if you're wondering if it's charging. So I thought that was a really nice feature, but we can also see we're pulling this, this phone's pretty much charged. We're pulling about a half an amp there. Um, seven watts we're using. You can see the internal resistance is 18. External resistance is 24.1 ohms. 
just you know what your battery is doing and it's really, really cool. I love this. Now everything is placed where it is because of what's going on inside. I've got two, I hate to admit it, but I've got two Miati 16 amp hour batteries uh, right here. And basically that's the top of them. And for those of you that are OCD, yes, I know that this is off center and yes, it drives me crazy. Um, I screwed up, it is what it is, so whatever. On Big Geek though, I've also decided, I've watched a couple other battery builds and I saw some guys putting uh, these LED lights on there. So I thought that was pretty sweet. So I've got three sets of two lights. I've got one here, I've got one on the back and they're all separately controlled. So there's the third one. So, you know, if you want it, if you're just walking down the street or whatever, you can pick it up and use it as a flashlight. You can turn it on if the power's out and it'll, it'll light up the whole room, which is pretty awesome. Uh, it, these things get pretty darn bright. And now we're in my bathroom and you can't see me. But if I turn a light on, now you can. Now that's the other light. And now that's the other light. So it totally fills the room. Like, <laughs> this is cool. The cool thing about Big Geek is it's got this top compartment where I can store little things. So I've just got a few cables here. I've got a mess of uh, USB-C cable to lightning, and then I've got a micro USB, and then I have some power pole to barrel connectors for some of my QRP radios. And then I've got my, my uh, Yaesu VX7R, this guy here, charges off at 12 volt. So I can just plug this right into the power poles and charge my radio right up, no problem. Now let's see what's under the second layer. As we open up Big Geek, we can see, got a little uh, length of lamp cord. If you ever thrown out a lamp, salvage the cord, put some power poles on it. Now you've got a DC extension cord. This has gone through a couple revisions. I originally built this with just the charge controller in here, but I wanted to add fuses, so I did. I, I wanted this to be underneath but there's too much crap underneath, so I've got the fuses all here. So this is a BioNO charge controller. I think it's the BP20, I don't really remember. Uh, there's actually a USB uh, jack on the back here, but I covered it up, but that's okay. We don't need any more USB. And I wired this up to a switch, so uh, because if it's, if it's constantly connected to the battery, it will always stay on. So I just wired up uh, this, this top power pole here is the charge in, and then that goes to the solar panel in and then the battery connects here. The load is connected uh, directly to the battery through the fuse block here. So everything is nice and safe. Now underneath all of this, uh, electrical engineers, I'm gonna warn you right now, it's not pretty, but it all works. So you might wanna, you know, if there's kids in the room, <laughs> you might wanna send them to bed early because I'm about to show you what's underneath all this. It's a lot of stuff, so. The first thing we can see here is we lift up this lid and I just, I just cut all this with a Dremel tool to make room for all of the stuff that's sticking on the front pate here. But same uh, shunt that we saw in Little Geek. We've got our battery hooked up to one side, uh, the negative of the battery. This is all, all the negative connections get connected to this. And you've got your two leads here going into the meter to tell you how much current draw you have. Um, I put a power pole on the charge control lead. Uh, this is going directly to the solar panel input. With This was like the first thing that I wired up. And I was like, hey, if I put power poles on everything, I could end up just taking this lid off easier. Yeah, that didn't happen. So that's why the power pole's there. Totally um, vestigial at this point. But whatever, that's what I did. And then basically everything's just kind of wired. All the grounds are connected together. Here's... I think I have two grounds actually, but there's all the grounds and uh, all the positives are somewhere else in there. So I know it looks like a hot mess and well, it is, but it works. But these are the two uh, 16 amp hour, uh, what are these, Miati uh, batteries that I've run in parallel. And I have a power pole on that that we can't really get to right now. But if I want to work on the box, I can just disconnect this power pole and that shuts off power to everything. So I don't shock myself or blow any fuses or anything like that. And then I've got all of the, these are the LED lights uh, here and then here, here, here and here on their own separate switches. And those are all just wired right together. So basically I took the main 
wire here coming out of the battery and I just split it a bunch of ways uh, on the positive side and ran it this way and that to the power poles down here to these switches. This is the USB. Here's another ground just for the, uh, <clears throat> this is the plug for the charge controllers. It's really not hard. It looks like a pain in the butt. This took me probably about six hours to build just because I was trying to figure out how to wire everything and where I wanted to lay everything out. Um, but it actually worked out perfect. The, uh, the power pole blocks here keep this battery from sliding. I mean, they just fit perfectly in here. And then on the right side, I just put some of that pick apart foam that comes in the Harbor Freight Pelican knockoff boxes. Uh, just to keep it from sliding around. And then once this once this is on top of it, um, everything, like there's, there's really nothing going around inside of it. So um, everything's fairly rigid-ish. So there's nothing really sloshing around. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's it in a nutshell. So I, I think there's, uh, what do I have? One, two, three. I think I have four different circuits in here. Oh yeah, duh, one, two, three, four. There's four different circuits in here. So not too difficult. DC wiring is pretty simple, I think. So, but yeah, that's the inside of Big Geek. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for you on this episode. Uh, these are really fun projects to build. They're practical. They're nerdy. Um, <laughs> if you're a battery geek like me, you just want to do it to play with more batteries. Um, but they're, they're really, they serve a lot of purposes. Like I said, if the power goes out, you've got batteries. I mean, you could... Really, I mean, you could hook a uh, little inverter up to this and charge your uh, laptop or something. Um, you could run a TV off of it for a while if you want, really depending on your battery. I mean, uh, you could you could put more batteries or bigger batteries in these and really scale it up and, you know, the sky's really the limit. But just to have, like I said, I keep Little Geek in my car pretty much all the time just because you never know. And then Big Geek uh, has been coming with me lately on some of my portable activations. I put Miatis in here because they're cheap. Um, my Bioeno is still my baby. <laughs> it's a way better battery. So I, I use this mainly still with, with my 100 watt rigs, but nice to just, you know, you wanna play some portable radio out on the porch, you know, grab the, grab the go box, whatever. So anyway, it's just a cool thing to build anyway. If you have comments or questions, put them in the comments. Please don't ask me for a wiring diagram. I'm not capable of making one of those. Connect all the black to the black and all the red to the red. Don't cross the streams. You're probably pretty good, but uh, I will put links to uh, as many parts as I can in the description if you want to pick them up, especially these, uh, these two things here are, are like the winners for these boxes, I think. So anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching another episode of K&M Radio Stuff 73.